This has never been done before. This level of technology has never been brought to this problem. What's up everyone? Today we're doing something a little bit different. I am in downtown San Francisco and I'm gonna talk with the founders of Zbiotics, which is a six person startup and they make a probiotics drink. It's engineered to treat the next day effects of alcohol. I think it's pretty cool. We'll go inside the office and I'll show you guys what it's like inside. Let's go upstairs. Yeah, this is uh, one of our funky uh, conference rooms. This is fun. Yeah. Like it's, it's pretty, uh, yeah. it's like an old photography building and yeah. they like converted it into a working space. So, yeah. I don't know what this used to be for, but now we use it to hold this light, so. Yeah, it's really cool. All right, let's actually go up the steps. Right. Yeah. Yeah, 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 for sure. All right. Awesome. Well, uh, thanks for sitting down and talking with me today. Totally. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for coming by. Really <laughs> yeah. It. All right. So you mentioned that you got a PhD in microbiology. That's right. correct. Yeah. And how did you end up in this sort of a space specifically? So, yeah, I was yeah. really interested in uh, genetic engineering and, and using that to kind of benefit people's lives. And so there's a lot of ways it could have gone, but really at the end of the day, I thought that this is a great place to start as a way to kind of engage with people. Right. So how did you end up deciding on this specific use case? Because it's a pretty unique product, right? Yeah, totally. It is. And, and, you know, in one sense, I felt like it was a great opportunity for us to apply science to a problem that is kind of riddled with snake oil solutions. Mm, yeah. You know? And so I thought that was a great opportunity, A, that, you know, in the 6,000 years of human history that people have been drinking alcohol, nobody has built something, mm -hmm. you know, purpose built. So before settling on your own startup, did you explore other things? What kind of jobs did you work? What was your experience like? Totally, yeah. I mean, you know, before, after I graduated from college, I still didn't really know what I wanted to do. I ended up working in a lot of different spaces. Uh, you know, I worked in a bar, I worked in construction, um, and then I, you know, I worked in a chemistry lab, and then I ended up doing academic research in microbiology, mm -hmm. and that's where I kind of found my passion for that. Um, and, and so that's what encouraged me to go to grad school. Right, so yeah. then after grad school, at what point did you decide, I wanna start my own thing? Yeah, so I think I knew going in that, I knew some things I didn't wanna do. Right. I knew I didn't wanna do ac academia, even though I was gonna be going back into academia. Right. Um, and I also was pretty sure I didn't wanna do like big pharma and big biotech. Um, it just didn't sound as appealing to me. Um, and so I kind of went in with the hypothesis that I wanted to do. Right like my own startup or something small, small biotech. And so I ended up doing an internship in grad school at a small biotech company developing novel antibiotics. And so I, I kind of think I confirmed that this is where I wanted to be was in a startup space. Awesome, that sounds good. So let's go down to the lab. Let's take a look at the product. I think it's a really interesting one. We'll talk a little bit about the science behind it. Yeah, man, that sounds awesome. Sounds good. All right, so this is where the magic happens, there it is. I guess. Yeah. Uh, so could you give us a rundown of what this product actually is, how it works, all the science behind it? Yeah, totally. I mean, yeah. at, the very, at the very highest level, it's basically that you know, we took a probiotic bacteria, a uh, safe bacteria you already eat every day, mm -hmm. and then we just engineered it to do a similar function to what your liver does to help you break down one of the toxic byproducts of drinking called acetaldehyde. So mm -hmm. a fair amount of acetaldehyde gets formed in your gut uh, and your liver is very good at breaking it down, but your liver doesn't have access until it's absorbed out of your gut. So we just really are removing it when it's in your gut before it goes out into your body. So what was like the time frame, like? So after you got the science down, yeah, developing the product took how like like two like years? Two years. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, uh, in terms of you know the manufacturing protocol, the bottling protocol, like what size it would be in, like what the form factor would be, all those things, and then branding it and all that stuff. I mean. In parallel to all those decisions, we were also doing all the regulatory requirements, all the safety testing, um, and, and all that kind of stuff as well. And so together, those things took us two years to do. Wow, gotcha. Yeah. So were you, it was mostly just you at first? Yeah, And right. then you brought in a second person. Who was the next person you brought in? Yeah, so for the first year, it was just science, and it was just me uh, as a scientist at the bench. And then once we had that and we needed to kind of turn it into a business, then I brought my co-founder, Stephen, on. Um, oh, okay. And then the two gotcha. of us together worked for another year. Um, uh, kind of building out uh, all the sort of logistics, the regulatory or the uh, yeah regulatory and the manufacturing and things like that. Um, and then uh, we slowly brought on more people as as we needed more help. So we brought on another scientist, 
uh, in year three. Uh, and then we brought on head of marketing a few months before we were ready to launch. Uh, and then we brought on um, help in terms of science and marketing after that. So we grew to six in the last, uh, basically from three to six in the last year. Yeah, ah, that, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. So I know a lot of people in the audience are either interested in the startup space or they're just curious about what it's like being a founder. Do you have any advice for people who want to get started in this space? Yeah, I mean, you know, I think the common thing you hear is like, just get started. And like, that is true. But I really think like, honestly, about how I started, it was, it was almost like the opposite. Like I, I couldn't not start it at the end of the day. Like I, this idea had been brewing in my head in some form or another for like eight or nine years before oh, I actually wow. started. Yeah, it was like, Festering. It never went away. It kept nagging at me. I'd tell people about it. They liked it, and like I couldn't shake it. And then, basically, ultimately, uh, through you know some happenstance, like I got lucky, and somebody like heard the idea and wanted to give me a little bit of seed money to get it started. And so then it was like, okay, I have to stop like thinking about it, right? Like I got to actually make. Uh, a decision and so it allowed me to kind of do that cost-benefit analysis I have a job that pays me this much and now I have this idea this dream this thing I care about and I have this much you know and like do I do I go for it and so you know it wasn't just like oh I want to I want to start a startup what should I do it was much more like this idea wouldn't go away and like the universe just kept feeling like it was like pushing me to do it and mm -hmm. so um, when I went in, it was it was time, you know. And right. I think that, that was so important. because you were in this space for a while, you had been thinking about the, this specific idea, and then the second you got funding, you just jumped ship and you went for it. Pretty much, it was like the last nudge I needed. You know, right, like right. like my brain wouldn't let let me give it up. And then when like the logistics lined up, it was like, okay, I have no excuse. I got to do it now. Right. Yeah. So you've been thinking about it for a while. Was yeah. there anything that you wish you knew when you got started? Yeah, I mean, I think like uh, one of the things. I mean. The first thing my, my brain goes to is the fact that like, no, actually it was like, it was exciting. Like part of what's great about doing a startup, I think is that like the unknown, like not right, knowing right. was like part of the fun and part of what makes this, this job like so cool is that right. like every day something new comes up and you kind of have like all these problems you didn't know you were going to have to solve and you have to constantly learn. So that's really right. fun. But I think there was one thing that like, I wasn't like psychologically or emotionally prepared for, which is like the feeling that you never feel like you made it or you succeeded. Like it always feels like you haven't done anything yet. Uh, you know, and that's because like every, you set like this milestone, like I really want to do X and then you do X and you realize like, and then behind it is like this way bigger mountain, like Y. And you're like, oh, so X actually didn't really matter because Y is way harder. Okay, so if I do Y, then I'll make it. And then you get to Y and then you see Z and you're like, oh geez. And I kind of thought like, you know, I'm a small startup, I'll make it eventually. I'll eventually feel like I made it. But I've talked to you know companies or friends who did startups that are much further along and, and they said the same thing. It's like, nope, like, you know, I'm like, man, you have like 70 employees, you make all this money, like, and they're like, no, I, I, I still have that feeling, like I still have not made it. And so I think like being prepared to never feel like you actually succeeded <laughs> is like a really like hard thing yeah. to deal with in some ways. And you have to keep your momentum even though you feel that way. Yeah. So it seems like there's really no finish line in sight. Do you feel like this is sustainable for you? Is this the lifestyle that you can do just like forever? Is there a point at which you think that you gotta exit this and just like move on to something else? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, like, I ask myself that question probably every day. You know, yeah, like yeah. I'm walking home and like, you know, I've made like a thousand decisions that day and, it, and it's all very nebulous as to whether or not they were right or wrong. And as soon as I walk by like some, you know, big building with a, you know, a big name on it, it's like, man, wouldn't it be nice to just like, walk into that building every day and have somebody just tell me what to do and I do my job and be done. And, uh, but then, you know, and for that moment, I'm like, yeah, that sounds like a lot easier. But then I think to myself, like I had jobs like that mm -hmm. and, and yeah, they were easier, but they were also boring. Like I got burned out, I got tired. And, and as much as this can be stressful and exhausting, I never reach burnout. This is the longest job wow. I've ever had. Um, it's crazy to think that, yeah. that like the startup now, I've been doing it for three and a half years. Um, and it's the one that I'm still the most enthusiastic about because like no matter how hard I work, no matter how much stress there is, uh, it's always in pursuit of my own dreams and working for myself. And so I think that that, that more than makes up for like uh, any, any kind of burnout or boredom I would get from, you know, from, from working for somebody else. Wow. Yeah. 
inspiring. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for sharing. This is totally, uh, man. I, I hope you guys found some value in that. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, it was nice talking to you, man. Definitely, dude. Thanks for coming by. All right. Well, make sure to hit the subscribe button, like, comment, hit the notification bell, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Hey, hey, hey.